You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and my co-host, Keelan Harvey, your local mortgage experts right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, June 2nd show. It's a great day to talk money, and that's what the show is all about, how to make money, save money, and have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but you can call for any questions or connect with the guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And in studio right now, first time in studio, Aaron Alexander with Finally Social. And stop marketing to yourself is the conversation we're having with Aaron. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us in studio today. Thank you so much for having me, Tina. And a little bit about Aaron. Aaron Alexander is the founder and CEO and top social butterfly of FinallySocial.com. Over the last three years, Aaron has grown Finally Social from a boutique social media company to a full-service marketing enterprise. Aaron has built strong relationships with clients across the industries with a specification in real estate agents. As an active member in her community, Aaron enjoys connecting with other business owners, thought leaders, and referral partners. Partners. She is also involved with the local nonprofits. Aaron, right out of the gate, uh, it's important to see how you look in your future clients' eyes, isn't it? It's absolutely. So um, what happens is, is when somebody meets you, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to Google you, right? So they're going to try to figure out, is this the right real estate agent for me, the right mortgage broker? So they're going to look for you at, on Zillow, all your social media, see if you have a website. Um, And so a lot of people don't necessarily have any of that. So I would imagine it would probably be really important on at least the first time and on maybe on a regular basis to Google yourself and kind of check out what's online there. It is. And it's really important to know um, what's going to be the most important. Uh, Right now, Zillow, people are looking at Zillow, looking at how many past sales people have had. um, If you've had any testimonies, if you have your bio on there. I just recently had an agent that she did not have a testimony on there since night or 2015, and so she lost a two million dollar listing. Wow! Because she was like, "I'm sorry, but you don't look like you're active." So. Wow, that's rough. So, how should you be marketing yourself? Is that important? Um, it's very important. So, what happens is, is most people market to themselves, right? So, if you are just going on Facebook, then that's all you're doing for marketing. Um, but that's not what your audience is doing. You know, some of your audience may only do email. They may only do Instagram. They may only do LinkedIn. They may only, you know, there's a, like a top five that I do. Um, and so you have to make sure that you're blanketing and reaching out to your audience on, you know, all certain different types of social media. Yeah, that makes total sense to be covered on all the social media platforms. Now mm-hmm. let's talk about uh, the importance of who you're marketing to. Is that important to really have that target? Yeah. Well, you need to make sure that you're, um, first of all, talk, uh, targeting your past clients. I find that a lot of agents don't actually market to their past clients, mm-hmm. which I don't understand why. But um, And then you also want to make sure that you're, you create an audience and figure out where what type of audience that you want, right? And then from there is where you can create um, different audiences t- on Facebook, for instance, to be able to run Facebook ads boost to them and things like that. So you're talking about multiple streams of marketing. Uh, One of the things we hear a lot is Instagram. How powerful is Instagram? Instagram is very powerful, but it is only pictures. Um, And so there's going to be people that only use Instagram, but then there's also people that only use Facebook. Um, Luckily, Facebook owns Instagram. So if you ever do you know, you put a new listing on Facebook, you can boost it or do a Facebook ad, and you can also select for it to post onto Instagram. So what about um, ha- uh, favorite hashtags for you, Erin? Because I mean, uh, obviously having <laughs> a, a real uh, catcher and some real buzz yeah, action uh, words. I do. Well, so for me, I have a new uh, movement that I'm doing. It's called Get Out of Your Pajamas. And then also that. Pajamas Movement. And what that is, is that um, I don't have a traditional office. So my office is virtual. 
So I'm getting, you know, my office is get out of bed, go make coffee, and then go to my office right next to my bedroom. Uh So, you know, you can get caught up as an entrepreneur just staying at home and staying in your pajamas, and it just, it, it... it's just not very fun all the time. Yeah, Keelan and I wouldn't know about that. We're in the office every day, very early. <laughs> very yeah. early, yeah. So you're talking quite literally of getting out of your pajamas, it sounds literally. like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I could understand that. That's got to be a challenge at home. So do you know the power of having your own personal website? Yes. And so the power of having your own personal website as opposed to having um, your office website that they give you, the agency website that they give you, is that you have full control of what, how you market and what you put on the website. Um, I believed in something called controlled marketing. So you put events and blogs and you put your listings and your solds on your website. And then from there, you share to your social media. So that way, when people click, they click back to your website. So they get to know you better. And then they also get to interact with you better. So, Aaron, you mentioned uh, Zillow and Trulio, and I know you put a lot of focus on uh, real estate, and obviously there's a lot of activity um, in the real estate platforms mm-hmm. for real estate agents. So how are you seeing that some of your real estate agent clients are losing business through Zillow and Trulio or things that they're they're not doing correct? Well, one I think one of the most important things is when you have a sale is that you ask to get a testimony. Um, and so for Zillow, that's a, a big part of it. Um, I would say that you should always get a testimony on Zillow and on Facebook because, again, people like to read about who you are and what you're about. Um, and then always make sure that you have your past sales listed. They want to see what your track history is and make sure that your bio is current and relevant and that it's a, you know shows a little bit of your personal side as well because, again, they're using that as your resume. And so you want to make sure that it's completely dialed in. And I think that's so important with a bio. I think people ask that question a lot. You know, um, should I be really putting in my bio anything that has to do with personal? But when you can connect your why behind what you're doing, and for most of us, our why behind is our passion, which is connected to us personally. So I I love that, Erin. You know, I have to ask, because Tina's really good about this. Uh, She does her Facebook Live videos all the time. Uh, What is the power in the Facebook Live videos? How does that help? Um, that is, it's real time. So people get to know who you are. They get to watch you. They get to see you. Uh, Facebook right now is really putting an emphasis on all video, but Facebook live, uh, in particular. Um, so you're just going to get better SEO, better traction. More people are going to see you. Yeah, and Kaylin, thank you for that shout out. I didn't pay him for that, but <laughs> my Facebook Live, just so anybody's looking for it, actually is a private group. So I've got a, a coaching program I do for real estate professionals and business professionals. And so once you're part of that alumni, then it's it's a, a Wednesday Facebook Live uh, challenge that I do. Nice. Um, so you can't find it, but in um, a, a, a lot of people, there's a there's a pushback for videos. And what do you see is the biggest pushback for doing video? Um, I think they just don't understand what they need to do. Uh, If somebody, so what I do for my agents is I simplify it. Mm -hmm. You know, it can just be answer a question a week or a question a month on what um, you get asked all the time. You know, if you do condos, uh, what are are CCNRs? What are HOA dues? Um, Just really simplifying and having just a clear vision of what you're going to say on those videos helps you immensely. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. I went to a a workshop years ago and this is when I got over video because the presenter, I'll make it a short story. It's um, uh, but the presenter was looking out in the audience and saying, any of you there are there or if you're there and you don't use video because you don't like the way you look on video, get over it. That's how you look in person face to face. Now, I know the show is not on video, but I got that. It was like, wow, that's exactly the weird thing I do with my mouth and how my eyes get really big. That's just the way that I talk. So anyways, well, and people are used to that. So if they see yeah. you on video, it's no different. But when I saw myself in right. video, I didn't really think I looked like that. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't either. I'm like, wait, that's not me. Yeah. So, Erin, what's the uh, number one reason you see that just people are not doing? What's holding people back? Um, I think it's because they don't understand it and they don't, um, again, they market to themselves. So they don't see the value in marketing across the board. Um, and honestly, I think it's because people just don't, they don't understand why. And nobody has simplified it for them as to why. 
Yeah. And it's, you know, so important. Um, everything is going towards that video. And you talked about virtual. There's a lot of people are doing things virtually mm-hmm. um, from their office. You know, our coaching program that we do is virtual. We use Zoom. And so yeah. really being able to connect and create that space is so important in advancing no matter, you know, what industry that you're uh, you're in. So um, active on LinkedIn, how important is that? Because I know that's really the professional business space. It is, but again, you always have to think, you know, like they need houses as well Mm -hmm. or they need a mortgage. So they're looking to see who they know and then who do, you know, LinkedIn's all about your connections, right? Who can I connect you with? And so they're looking at um, people that they respect and seeing who is connected to them or they're looking at their LinkedIn um, LinkedIn page, and that's really the resume as well. So you want to make sure that that's all dialed in. It tells mm-hmm. what you specialize in, who you are, what your other positions have been, making sure you have pictures in there, and just having all that get recommendations if you can. Um, it's, it's just as powerful as Facebook and uh, Instagram. Good to know. Don't neglect the LinkedIn. Mm -mm. So being the expert, we have to know, what's your favorite social media outlet? Uh, Facebook, for sure. I think um, with Facebook, you can do whatever you want. You can do Facebook Mm -hmm. Lives. You you have to have a business page if you are a business. Um, Do not have your business information on your personal page just because uh, Facebook is really into making sure that everything is separate. Um, I've known a couple people that have used their personal page only for their business and a little bit for them, and Facebook has actually shut them down. So make sure you have a business page. And with that business page, you can create audiences. You can boost your uh, listings and Mm -hmm. your solds and articles if you want or your blog, and you can create an audience so it goes out just to them. And you can also share that to Instagram. So it's so versatile and there's so many things that you can do with Facebook. Yeah, and I, I love Facebook because no matter what industry you're in, sales or not, it's all about connecting with people on a personal level. And right. Facebook is set up to connect with people on a personal level. And a little uh, shout out tip with Facebook because it took me years before I realized it and it's a huge benefit. Um, when you have a lot of people, friends, because you're just, you're accepting everybody because right. you're afraid not to, especially when you're in a sales <laughs> industry, you don't want to say yeah. no to somebody, right? right. Um, but then you've got this mass group of people. But you can set up your friends list and the friends list is so awesome. Do you know about that? Mm-hmm. So share the the, the benefit with um, uh, friends list. Well, what happens is, is you have so many people on your Facebook, I, I don't even know how many I have, but you all your friends get lost, right? Uh, yes. So there's you can create a list so that way your friends show up on top of everybody else mm-hmm. every time you log in. Mm-hmm. So obviously, don't put like a hundred friends in there because then again, it's going to get all convoluted. But yeah. if there's like your mom or your family or your best friends or your cousins or whatever, you put them on that list so you're never missing what they're posting. Yeah, and I I like it for my, you know, my top business partners that I'm I'm friends with or ones that I'm trying to really connect on that level. I right. I built there and and so I go in there and all their stuff is there. Nice. So I don't have to look for them to right. find out what they're doing so I can comment on their stuff. And then Facebook's algorithms are freaking awesome because what it does is if you comment on somebody automatically it considers that you're a friend of theirs so now all of your stuff goes to the top of their feed and so it's really magical how strategic um that you can really get connected on a deep uh level yes yeah what do you suggest as far as those algorithms what's the best thing people can do to get more engagement on their social media Um, Definitely make sure um, you post everything, if it's business, obviously post everything to your business page, but make sure that you tag, um, if you're at a business, tag the business. If you're with friends, tag your friends. Um, And then whenever you get any interactions, any comments, um, always make sure that you put their, tag their name in it. So then again, it keeps putting you, every time you tag somebody, um, it'll put you to the top of the list again. So you'll just keep starting and coming back and coming back. So as we wrap up our time, Erin, one last question. Uh, we got a minute. What is the biggest mistake that you see people make when it comes to marketing? Not marketing. (laughs) That's a a pretty gosh darn big mistake. (laughs) Yeah. um, Just, again, marketing to themselves and not believing in and really being open to other marketing ideas. Love it. Well, thank you so much for coming in and, and joining us. You're so welcome. Thank you guys for having me.
And coming up next in the Money Hour, does it really matter who you work with when it comes to this market? We're talking about real estate. And I have Sherry Putsky with Windermere Real Estate right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break.